all right hey y'all i promise y'all i will come back and i would tell you guys the story about the the day that i lost my hand and um what that day was like for me and what all happened in that day and i'm gonna try to make this quick as possible and kind of go over it um so i was 11 years old at the time that i lost my hand i was living with my grandmother and i was living on the west side of chicago in an apartment with my grandmother so my grandmother my aunt and my uncle they also live there as well that's that's necessary to the story okay it's necessary to the story okay so i came home from school and i went to at the time went to jw how <laughs> Oh God, okay, I'm so corny. But anyway, <laughs> I went to, I came home from school. I was best friends with this girl named Tasha at the time. I, as soon as I got home, that was the first thing I did was I got on the phone with her. You know, I got straight on the phone. I didn't do no homework. I hadn't taken off my school uniform. I got on the house phone. There was no cell phones then. I got straight on the house phone and called her. And her, she was a Jehovah's Witness, so her mama really didn't like her talking to me. So we would have to sneak and talk. So I would call her and be like, hey, can you talk? <laughs> but anyway, we got on the phone, y'all. So we talking. Don't I do not know what we was talking about. I do not. Up until the, the, the accident, I don't know what me and Tasha was talking about. I couldn't tell you. However, my uncle came into the house from and he came in the house he was going through some of his stuff i was sitting in the living room he was going through some of his stuff and this thing fell out it looked like a handle with like a funnel made on top of it it's hard to explain but it was like oh it looks crazy and i asked him i remember asking him asked my uncle i said coco what's that by the way coco feels so bad about this story that's his nickname y'all but he feels so bad about this story but I love my uncle to pieces. I hold no, no nothing against him at all. So when I'm telling the story, there is nothing, no issues, no bad blood between me and my family. I love him. So I asked him what it was and he tells me nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't touch his stuff. So naturally you don't tell me, me, I'm Miss Inquisitive. I am Miss, I need to know the why. Don't just tell me not to touch nothing to think I ain't gonna touch it. That, that's not how I operate. I gotta know. I like to find out things. I I, I mean, that's just me. So, if, especially younger me. Older me too, but older me, I feel like I got a lot more to lose. So, I, <laughs> if you tell me not to touch nothing, I ain't touching it. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> you good. But anyway, so he told me not to touch it. So, as soon as he left out, I told Tasha, I was like, look, Tasha, he told me not to touch it, but I wanna touch it. Tasha being a sweet person she was and she probably still is and she was like the good angel on my shoulder she's like Erica don't you mess with that that's how she always was with me always trying to tell me I was like I said well Tasha I said I really want to know what it was she's like Erica I mean I told her I, said, I really want to know what it is she's like Erica don't you touch it didn't your uncle just say you not to touch a girl I was like but still he ain't gonna know he ain't gonna know so <laughs> I I got it and I looked in it I looked at what it was and inside the funnel part was this like wick type situation so if you don't know back then in the 90s it was really big for in Chicago people used to make their own like explosives their own fireworks right so they would just make them and sell them or whatever and light them and then they would for the big bang effect that's what it was used for right so it was just to be able to make loud noises so when i lit it i not knowingly lit a half a stick of dynamite that's what it was equivalent to what i lit so <laughs> i'm on the phone with tasha i'm talking to her the whole time and i lit the wick i said tasha i lit it She's like, Erica, oh my God. She's like, Erica, put it out. I say, it's sparkling. It's okay. It's just a sparkler. That's what I thought. I'm sitting on my couch. I said, Tasha, it's just a sparkler. So I got the phone like this. And then I go, I said, I'm about to go show my auntie. I said, because it ain't nothing but a sparkler, girl. And he was trying to tell me not to touch it. I got up off the couch. I took a couple steps from the couch. And it blew up when it blew up 
I don't know how long I was out. I do not know that, but I know I came to. When I came to, the house was smoky. I was thrown against the wall, like my back was against the wall. I just remember the house being really smoky. And my aunt was already home from school. She was in high school. She was already home. And she was like, she came running in Chicago. The apartments, they were like long. So in the living room I, where I was at, there was like a long hallway down the hallway was where my aunt was, like where the kitchen, my grandmother's room, the dining room and stuff like that was at. She comes running up the hallway. <laughs> Erica, what happened? Well, nobody calls me Erica. Tootie, Tootie, what's going on? Tootie, what is going on? And <laughs> I was so scared y'all thought I was gonna get in trouble. So first thing I said like, I don't know, some of the cocos blew up. <laughs> Lied on my uncle. I'm sorry, Coco. But I told you, I told I said, I don't know. <laughs> Some of the Coco's blew up. And I'm saying this as she's running towards me. So as she's running towards me, when she finally gets to me, she screams. Because by this time, as she's running towards me, I'm figuring out that I literally lost my hand. Because as I'm getting up, my shirt felt wet and like it was sticking to me. So I looked out at my shirt and my shirt was covered in blood. And that's when I saw my hand. So when I looked at my hand, it was like completely gone. And not to be gross or anything like that, but literally all I saw was like bones and tendons and ligaments or whatever the case may be. That's all I saw. Um, I didn't... <laughs> God is good. Let me tell you how he created us. This little, this little pause break. But literally because of the nature of what happened to me, they told me that all my pain gates were closed. So I did not feel any pain because I was in shock. So I had no pain. I was literally walking around my house and helping my auntie had to, when she was trying to call down one one back then we paged my uncle dinky because you know you know he was the he was the everything of the family so anything go on if they happen we paged dinky <laughs> so we paged my uncle now one one he called back and we tell him what was going on but she called it essentially we got nine one one. she called i called one of them but i remember my grandmother had just, just did laundry and it was like a load of laundry sitting um, in the like dining room area so I took a shirt out of the laundry and just wrapped my hand around it and I kept trying to run my hand under the faucet water my auntie was like why do you keep running your hand under there I said I don't know when you get cut that's what you do <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing y'all but I just was trying to do what I thought was natural to do was trying to just run the blood out but it just kept coming and I was like soaking shirt after shirt after shirt just trying to tie the blood off so yeah that's crazy huh but thank god for my auntie being there with me i love you Mikamu. but then um ambulance came and because we lived in an apartment they could not carry me down i had to walk down i remember sitting on stairs like in the hallway and they're trying to ask me all these different questions and i'm like i don't want to answer all these questions you know what i'm saying i'm from the hood we don't answer questions to the people <laughs> i don't care what question they was asking me i, I don't know I don't know. <laughs> That's how I felt like I ain't asking no additional questions, but I had to ask him to let me go back in because it was like I felt my face was wet too. Then it turns out that in this eye, I was crying blood. I had gashed my cornea, cornea, which is the top layer of your eye. I had gashed that, which I ended up getting a transplant, which is why my eye is this blue color. I ended up getting a transplant and it turned to this blue color here. I got that like a year after my accident. But um, yeah, so I went to the hospital. They walked me out in front of everybody. I didn't get on the stretcher, y'all. Oh my goodness, I was so embarrassed. I didn't get on the stretcher. Do you know back then in the night, everybody, all the neighborhood come out when something going on. Man, the whole neighborhood came out. They walked me outside looking foolish with no hands whole neighborhood was out looking at me like oh my god oh my god i was embarrassed <laughs> i can laugh now y'all but god knows lord jesus so that's essentially how i lost my hand i lit a half a stick of dynamite in my grandmother's living room 
I later found out it blew out her windows. The speakers in her TV, floor model TV. I'm dating myself. Floor model TV blew the speakers out, blew her windows out. My uncle, he said he later found like my finger bones and stuff like that. Blew holes in the wall and in the ceiling and whatnot. We still lived there after the accident. Uh, we lived there for quite some time after the accident, I remember. Um, I'm... I mean, there's other parts and pieces of the story that I remember that maybe I'll share later and and things like that, that, that transpired. But yeah, essentially, that's what happened. I didn't listen when somebody told me not to touch something and leave it alone. I didn't listen. And I lit a half a stick of dynamite because I could not listen and because somebody didn't tell me the why. So just because, see, now I feel like I got to give y'all a message, give y'all a word. So even though God doesn't give you the reason behind behind why he's taking you through something or why he's telling you you can't have that or you can't do that or you can't go here or you can't be with this person, even though he doesn't give you the why behind it, don't try to go do it on your own. Don't go, don't try to go messing up God's plan. Don't try to go do all of that and then you find yourself in a bigger mess. In a bigger situation now don't think that even in that mess that god can come back take you the long way around teach you something and still give you beauty for your ashes now don't think he can't do that but doesn't mean we have to go that route we don't have to so even if god is telling you no even if he's telling you not now even if he's telling you oh, i'm not gonna tell you right now but just know it's for your own good don't touch it don't mess with it don't do it y'all just leave it alone don't be like erica <laughs> at 11 11 year old erica touching and lighting things she ain't got no business lighting thinking of something that it ain't the devil makes stuff appear like oh see i'm about to get into a whole nother message but all right <laughs> all right love y'all i promise y'all i'll tell y'all the story so that's essentially how i lost my right hand if you want to know anything else ask me <laughs> all right love y'all bye